Good morning. Great to be here. This is nutritional pharmacist Melissa Galladay. I am a registered pharmacist with a passion for nutrition. Today's topic is methadone and methadone clinics. And before we get started, I just want to let you know I do three calls a week. I do two calls on Tuesdays, 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. Pacific time. I also do a call on Thursdays, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Definitely would love to have you dial in. We do have the dial-in number attached, and we also do this Facebook Live, and we do post these to YouTube. What I want you guys to do when you listen to this, wherever you are on the planet Earth, please post your city, state, and country. We love to know where you're listening in from. We also encourage you to leave any comments or feedback. Today's topic is definitely a controversial one, and what I would like to do as a pharmacist is share a little bit about my first-hand experience with methadone and methadone clinics, and definitely want to touch on opioid abuse also. Number one, I want you guys to understand that the epidemic is of a very large scale, and I would say um, maybe 40% of the patients I would see on a daily basis were in the cycle of addiction. And what I mean by that is they were emotionally attached, psychologically attached to their prescription medications. And if they didn't get them, there wasn't just a physical withdrawal, which is natural with these medications, not outside of the methadone, but the opioids, hydrocodone, Percocet, uh, you know, various pain relievers that some of you might know, oxycodone, hydrocodone, uh, Vicodins, Percocets, those are the most heavily prescribed. We also have Oxycontins. And methadone is used to help people titrate off of those medications based on their um, addiction issue. But what I want you to understand is at least 40% of the patients I would deal with on a daily basis were psychologically attached to their prescription medications. Now, if you're working in the field like I was, you know, technicians, pharmacy technicians, pharmacists, medical doctors, etc., nurses, we would deal with these people. And if they weren't able to get their medications, they would be very hysterical, uh, potentially violent, you know, various things. And again, 15 years, I saw a lot of things. Another thing I saw quite frequently was, if you will, forgeries and people um, trying to get these medications illegally. And through my, you know, the course of my time, I was able to, you just learn these things. You kind of notice little things about the way a person is carrying themselves, particularly forgers. But the big thing is that the addicts, the addicts don't go through the trouble of hiding anything. They got their prescription, they're technically valid, and they don't really care what other medical professionals think because technically they think they have the right to these medications. And one of the things a lot of us working in the system, seeing what was happening, we, number one, we do have a legal responsibility to prevent someone we know that's addicted to medications getting them at the amounts we were seeing. So there were, there were like some stopgap measures that were in place, but nevertheless, the system has become completely overburdened. So. In my situation, filling between three to 800 prescriptions a day, I didn't have the time to do do dill a lot of times. I was also uh, intuitively new, or I would even know that this person should not be getting these medications, but I would call the doctor's offices and the doctors would okay it anyway. And I know there's doctors out there listening to this that understand this. They're just so beat down and trampled by these patients that really are in a horrible jam. They're, they're um, physically addicted to these drugs, they're highly physically addicted, they're now psychologically addicted to these medications. So they're pretty much like train wrecks and if you don't deal with them and just get them, it's easier just to give them their prescription, get them out the door and honestly they can go be someone else's problem. That's pretty much the ethos that exists predominantly in these situations. So it's very challenging to be around. But today's topic is methadone. And I know I have some listeners out there that have had first-hand experience with this. They, um, I work with addicts also that are addicted to heroin and are you know, in recovery. And methadone is a synthetic opioid that's used to help titrate people off of heroin. And what ends up happening, you guys, is that now this person who is physically and psychologically addicted to heroin and opioids, it's also used in opioid treatment, is now 
physically and psychologically addicted to methadone. And I want to brag about someone that I heard a few days ago and she was able to actually also get off of methadone. And, and for those of you out there listening that are dealing with this issue, that have family members dealing with this issue, that is an amazing story and not encouraged by the system. The system wants her to stay on that medication and it doesn't do anything. It still isn't dealing with any sort of her major um, addiction issues, yet this person was able to do that. And I'd be happy to help you if you're listening and you want to learn more. You definitely could post comments or PM me and I can teach you and share what she did, which isn't easy. It's not, you know, nothing is really easy in life, yet she was able to accomplish this. And I guess for those of you out there that are contemplating going on to methadone, I want you to understand that it's, you know, very short term use would make sense you know, two to three months, maybe six months max. But there needs to be, there needs to immediately start to be an intention to be titrating off. Because ju just as addicted as you are to heroin, you're gonna equally be as addicted to methadone. And that's something we see, I've seen as a, a medical professional, but I've also seen on the other side, seeing addicts having to go through this and the methadone clinics, etc. So here it is, you know, the pharmaceutical industry providing something that we view as a solution, but it's actually not a solution. So some of you out there listening, you're going to say, well, what can you do? And I highly recommend 12-step programs. I also recommend counseling. I recommend changing your environment dramatically, making new friends, people that don't use. A lot of people think that if they're, um, you know, that they can, they can go back into these environments and not have relapses and that is completely not the case. And also there are nutrients, being making, making sure you're getting nutrient dense food, making sure you're getting you know, a multivitamin, go to your local store and at least get on a multivitamin and start there. And if, you're, you know, if you want additional assistance, I would be honored to help you out and you can share this with anyone you know anywhere and I would love to be of service to them. So that's, that's a brief overview of methadone, and I look forward to engaging in this deeper and learning what you have to share about this. So thank you for joining us, and we'll be back. We'll see you later, 6 p.m. this evening. Bye-bye.